Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Uh, today we're going to make over some flower pots. Uh, I was cleaning out the storage area at church and we needed to get rid of a lot of things and uh, one of the things was these flower pots and uh, some of them are already um, painted uh, but not painted the way I want them so I'm just going to repaint all of these. Now some of these will get painted, some decoupaged, uh, some stamped on, uh, and even some clay molds on some of them. So I'm just going to go through and make my clay molds and, uh, and then go through and through and base coat each of these. And then some I'm going to be, be making some uh, stamp impressions on. So what I do is I just roll this out really thin and then uh, I take one of my stamps and uh, put some cornstarch on it and then roll it out over it and that will make an impression. And then I'm gonna just kind of organically um, tear this and um, glue some on some of my pots. And then that'll just add some texture to some of them. And I'm gonna use this to do a couple of pots with because I'm not gonna cover the whole thing. And for the most part, I'm going to just glue my molds on before I, um, before I paint this. Some I'll paint first and I, I decide to add molds on uh, later. But for the most part, I'll just be gluing this on and then uh, let it dry a little bit and then paint it. Uh, but I do always paint my molds while they're wet because uh, then you get less cracking. So these aren't necessarily gonna be in order. Uh, sometimes I'm having to wait on things to dry, but uh, I'll just kind of uh, bring you through the process of doing them in the order that I do them in. And then with this one, I'm also gonna, uh, or with the next one, I'm also gonna take one of my cookie cutters and cut a shape out of this. I'm just going to give these all different looks uh, because I felt like this was a good time of year to uh, add these little flower pots to different ones of my vignettes. It's just a good time right before spring to have plenty of these. And I wish I had had some larger ones, but um, I ended up with all these smaller ones. But this is another one of those projects that if you have several of these pots, uh, you can create a lot of different looks with these. And they're also pretty quick to do. Some of them have some steps to wait on, but for the most part, they're pretty quick to do. Now I'm using the color putty on this one uh, because I just wanted to give this one a, a very natural look and I'm gonna be adding some uh, wax to this. This one is the color sea glass. Now all of these are going to be Dixie Bell colors and uh, this one's color sea glass. The last one was putty. And this one is uh, also sea glass, but I'm purposely not getting full coverage on this one. And I'm using the color Farmhouse Green on this one, but I didn't even wash my brush before I painted it, so I get a little hint of that blue on this. And this one is the same green, uh, except that I am covering this one better. And then I'm gonna be base coating several of them in the color Buttercream. And then I think I did a couple in white and I may even use T rose on one or two of them. I think I did. So for this particular one, I uh, am going to stamp uh, some script in the background and then I'm going to be adding some um, rose transfers. Now, with these transfers, I ordered them through Amazon, and I will put that link in the description. Uh, although I'm not sure if you want to get them or not, because um, when I got them, they had a shiny finish, and that's not what I want. I used them on my last video on the mirror and was able to sand that and get that off. And I sanded the finish and got it off 
here, uh, but it's just a step that, you know, would be best if you didn't have to do. So I'm going to use these up and just sand the finish as best I can. And then all of these are going to be getting, um, the ones that don't get a wax on them are going to be getting a clear matte spray. Uh, so I'm going to take them outside and give them a couple of good coats of that to protect them. So that when you have a shiny finish, um, then it also, um, when you clear coat it with a matte finish, uh, you'll take some of that shine off. So with the combination of sanding these and then um, spraying that matte finish over the top of them will eliminate that shine. But I do love the size of these and I love the look of them. And I definitely don't want to waste them, so I'm gonna use them up. Uh, it just takes a little bit longer, but they're small, so it's not that big of a deal. But I love the look of the script behind these roses. And now I'm just doing some extra sanding on this because I want some of that clay pot to show through. And I'm even going to do some uh, sanding on the red pots. And some of these colors will look really pretty with the red shining through. And Sandy got the majority of the shine off these, but there was still a little bit before I uh, sprayed that matte finish on. So, uh, as you can see there, there's just a little bit of shine around the edges, and but once I sprayed that uh, clear matte spray, it was gone. And guys, this is one of the videos that I'm really struggling with because... Um, there's so much uh, repetitive things that I'm going to be doing with this. And ideally, I would play music. Ideally, I would pay, play my friend's music through this. Uh, but because uh, of that copyright infringement that I've not been able to figure out yet, I'm not able to do that. And um, I've, in the past, used some of the music from my editing app. And I just assumed all that was copyright free. But as it turns out, it isn't entirely copyright free either. So uh, trying to keep from getting out of trouble here, I'm just having to kind of talk through this. Now I do know that YouTube has a site that has lots of royalty free music, uh, but I haven't figured out how to use it yet. Um, I love to craft, but the, the um, technical part of it I don't love. I, I don't like to try to figure out electronics. I don't like to, um, I really don't like to be on a computer, but you know, obviously it comes with this. Now this is a part of a uh, Dixie Bell transfer that once I got it, I wasn't that happy with it um, because it's a little bolder than I like. Uh, so I'm just kind of cutting pieces off this and adding color to my pot here. Now this pot was red to begin with. So I'm going to do some extra distressing. And because these flowers are really dark pink, I think that red will, will kind of pull that a little bit. And I think it'll go well with it. And I love red behind the turquoise. So, um, so I'm doing some extra distressing on this one. I don't know what the weather is like where you are, but here in Tennessee today, um, I think we're pushing um, 80 degrees and we've had some rain and we've had so much rain that I am sick of rain. Um, but uh, it has been beautiful uh, temperatures today and now the sun is out and it's just kind of a sneak preview of spring. and. Um, Kind of helps my mood a lot. So as you can see here, all this distressing really uh, kind of brings this together. Now this trans transfer, vintage floral transfer from D Dixie Belle, I do love this one. I love this botanical book. So it only has one sheet like this and then the other one is black and white. But I really love the look of this one and I'll be using some of these on some of my pots. And because this one has some red in the florals 
on it. I'm going to do some extra distressing on this one also and bring out some of that red. And some of these pots I'm even going to use my antiquing ink on and just kind of antique around the top and the bottom. And uh, this is one of those that I'm going to be doing that with. So I did some distressing with my sandpaper because this one was brown underneath or just the regular pottery color. And then I'm adding some of my antiquing ink around the top and the bottom. And I didn't do this to all of them, but uh, I just felt some of them needed to have a warmer look to them. And this was one that I thought needed it. Now this next one is also going to have a little bit of red in it. So it, I'm also going to uh, do some extra distressing on this one. And then on this one, instead of putting the uh, script stamp behind it, uh, I decided to add it in later. And I also decided to um, paint the inside of this one red. So uh, I just used some regular craft paint and painted the inside of it red. And it wasn't as dark of a red as I would have liked it to be. So once it dried well, then I just used some of my antiquing wax and kind of made it a, a lot richer red. And uh, the antiquing wax won't stay because it will wipe off when you get it wet. Uh, but I just uh, used my clear matte finish on this and put a couple of coats over that. And, and then it stayed, or it will stay well. I use my antiquing ink pads for so many projects. And I know that most of them that I use it for, it's not what it's intended for. And if I didn't seal it, then obviously it wouldn't stay. But it just, sometimes it's just a quick way to get some aging, aging on things. And um, it works on fabric and cloth and, and now even these clay pots. And now for the next one, I'm going to work on one of those that I put the clay molds on and or the clay impressions on. And this was done with the color putty. And now I'm adding some white wax. So I decided at one point that I wanted to use one of my stamps from the set I see Paris and only ink up a small part of it and put around that top. And I liked it, but I just didn't feel like it really went that well. So I end up going, and I know that I have already used my white wax on this, uh, but I just wiped it off really well and went over this with uh, the color buttercream just around the top there. And I liked that look a lot, a lot more. And I also add a little bit to kind of dry brush the, the, uh, the uh, buttercream color over the the impression itself and i just was a lot happier with that and then once this all dried again i took my antiquing ink and uh, antiqued around the edges and even some over this impression and i was a lot happier with the look and as i said before i will uh, spray this with a clear matte finish but i just really like the aged look of that one now on this one, I'm adding my script stamp, and then I'm just gonna add some bits and pieces from different transfers that I have. So this is one that I can't really link because I'm just using uh, different little pieces from um, just some that I had left over, and I end up saving those and don't always remember which transfer they come from, uh, but I just found some little pieces that would work. And I'm also went over this one with the uh, antiquing ink around the edges. Now I haven't checked if you have to buy these, uh, what you would have to pay for them. I know that the ones at the Dollar Tree are teeny tiny and uh, you obviously wouldn't want to do the teeny tiny ones, uh, but um, I'll try to look on Amazon and see if I can find some of these and link that in the description also. Um, but the ones at the Dollar Tree, I just don't feel like are substantial enough in size. Now this next one, as a lot of you would probably guess because I'm a neutral person, um, I 
like this one the best because it's more it's uh, base coated in the buttercream and then I'm using the black and white floral on it and I just really like the look of that and this one is part of the black and white page from uh, Vintage Botanical so this one is one that I'll be ordering again um, although I love Dixie Belle paint uh, I'm not generally the biggest fan of their transfers I, I just feel like um, they need more for one thing uh, they need a better selection uh, but also um, I don't know I feel like they're a little harder to transfer than the redesign or the IOD not so much harder that I wouldn't order them they do work uh, but I do wish they had a better selection now this next one started out being the cotton white and um, I decided to use some of Dixie Belle's gel stain on it and uh, the gel stain will add a little bit of color but it's more of a translucent color so um, just kind of you can squirt it on uh, something and brush it on and wipe it off I'm just uh, squirting it directly onto my rag and then uh, I'll wipe it on my uh, pot and I like to keep that in the same direction I just like the look of it better but as you can see um, it just gives more of a translucent look and I do that on both the outside and the end inside and uh, because this is liquid it takes a little bit of that paint off because I'm rubbing pretty hard and so I didn't have to do any extra distressing on this one and now I'm just decoupaging uh, some of a napkin on the front and back of this and I just decoupage it with uh, some clear school glue and although this one is going to have the decoupage over the top of it i'm also going to uh, spray that clear matte finish on uh, both the inside and the outside of this one now on the next one um, i decoupage a napkin over the top of it also uh, but i'm using a b napkin on this one and it's a little darker than the yellow that's on my pot but i don't mind that I, I still like the look that i end up getting on this one and i stamped some script on script on this one first and also i took one of the uh, stamps from the set i see paris that had a b in the center of it and i just taped off everything except the little b and i stamped that on one side also and if you haven't tried using par a partial stamp on something uh, what i do is just take some masking tape and i tape around everything on the stamp that i don't want to transfer on to my project and then i ink up my stamp and then once i ink it up then i pull all that off and then you'll just have ink on on the uh, part of it that you want to use and you can do the same thing with stencils just tape it off and obviously you'll leave the tape on that when you do your stenciling but some of these larger stamps and stencils will still work on smaller projects if you just uh, are careful to make sure that you cover that up now there's also a part on this stamp that i wanted to use that says bees and queens and I'm going to use that around the top of this uh, so um, I'll only ink up that part of my um, stamp and again this one will get uh, a clear coat uh, spray on it now for this next one uh, my sweet friend Myra sent me a um, a mold and this one is one that she got at a cake decorating place and that's a great idea for buying these because they're they're uh, a lot less expensive that way uh, but i'm just adding some cornstarch to this and it's a very thin mold uh, so i don't think i would be able to put my clay and in, in in it and pull it out so what I decided to do with this one is roll out some of my clay and make an impression and then cut that out. So that worked perfectly. 
So I just took my scissors and trimmed the sides off and uh, it worked like a regular clay mold. And then I have a couple of pots here that I'm going to glue that around the top of. And uh, for one of these, I didn't make enough uh, to completely meet in the middle. So I just made another little clay mold and glued to fill that in. I could have made another one of those lace, uh, which I, I think that that's kind of a lace. Uh, I could have made another one and just cut some off of it, but I just decided I would put something different in the center. And I'm also going to do another technique on these two. Uh, these are going to be similar to each other. But I'm going to take one of my stencils and, uh, and I'm going to stencil, instead of stenciling with just straight paint, I'm going to take um, a putty knife or a spatula uh, and I'm going to rub that uh, rub a textured paint down inside that. Now generally you would use a sheetrock putty uh, or joint compound uh, but I, di I didn't have any and just decided to add some texture to my paint. So this is not the easiest thing to do on this type of surface uh, but I was given that I didn't need it to be perfect it worked out just fine. But you just rub that over the top of it and pick it up and then as you can see i've got a little extra texture there on the bottom but it's fine so i did that with both of these on the front and the back and i took some of my e6000 glue and i glued each of these on a candlestick and it it's just a candlestick that was a silver plate and i had painted them in the color buttercream uh, so I just glued these to the top of each of those and then let them dry well before I did my next step. And then once they were dry, all I did was uh, take some uh, white wax and went over them with the white wax and then wiped that the excess away. And I just love the look of these on that candlestick. Now there was one flower pot in this um, in this video that I didn't get uh, filmed. So uh, the one in the front there, I used some clay molds on and did some decoupaging on. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening and God bless you and your family.